Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, out in the field every year, there are a lot of things going on. And you know what's going on in your farm. But what's going on with seed breeders? With the corn breeders this year, there are quite a few new things that are going to be coming over the next few years. We'll talk about what they're working on today. Over the last few weeks in the show, we've been talking about certain micronutrients that are incredibly important for your farm and for your crop. Well, this week we're going to discuss copper. We'll talk about how you can apply copper on your farm and what kind of levels you need to raise a great crop. Well, building up those soil nutrient levels are great because they help your crop fight off the competition from weeds. We'll talk about stopping this week's Weed of the Week coming up a little later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. out in the field and you're noticing something's a little different on your corn leaves and you think you know this might be a disease maybe I saw it on Ag PhD one time I wish I had Ag PhD with me out in the field and you know I think my university was talking about some different disease that was happening in our area I wish I had those guys with me well guess what you can have both of them with you right now well, over the last year, we've been working with the American Phytopathological Society in developing a new app that you can use on your farm. It's called the Ag PhD Corn Diseases app or the Corn Field Guide app. And in that app, you can look at all these different diseases and the types of diseases that your corn may be affected by this coming season. The tricky thing when we see a corn disease show up is, well, we don't have it every year. So I'm not exactly sure, is this gray leaf spot, is it Goss's wilt? Is it something totally different? I, I'm not sure. So it's helpful if you've got a picture that you can compare to, to see, oh, does it look like this? Or does it look like this? That's a good thing. Then management comes into play of, okay, now I suspect I have gray leaf spot. What are the management options? And, and being able to see, hey, a foliar fungicide works pretty good on this problem but a foliar fungicide is not effective at all on another problem like Goss's wilt, for example, is pretty good when you're out in the field. So you can start making some decisions of, I better call the aerial applicator to come in, or I better get my sprayer tuned up because I'm gonna need to be out here as quickly as I can, those kinds of things. And then even towards the end of the season, you may be thinking, hey, I didn't notice that I had this problem out there, but look, I've got some gray leaf spot. How do I manage the residue? How do I manage my crop rotation? You can get some good ideas through this app as well. Yeah, it's kind of interesting if you look over the last 20 years in agriculture. 20 years ago, almost no one was using fungicide in corn in the United States. And today, a huge percentage of farmers are. Now, there are many reasons why this is. A lot of it just has to do with hey, the price of commodities is much higher. And yes, I realize commodity prices aren't where they were three, four years ago, but still, we're talking $3 corn today as opposed to $1.50 or something like that 15, 20 years ago. It's a, it's a big difference. In other words, you can afford to invest a few more dollars because every bushel you get just gains you that much more. The other big thing is everybody's talking about how do we reduce erosion? Well, how you reduce erosion is reducing tillage. Well, reducing tillage is great, but when you reduce tillage, you're going to have more diseases present. Not only that, but as our yields have just continued to climb and climb and climb, well, diseases might not have been the yield limiting factor on your farm years ago, but today they are, because as farmers, we've done a better job managing everything else from fertility to variety selection. We're doing a great job on the farm, but unfortunately, the, these diseases just feel like to me they continue to get worse each year or at least continue to get to be more of an issue on a lot of farms that we need to address if we're going to make more money and have higher yields. Well, Brian, all those things are true, but then you throw in weather. And this year, some areas got more rainfall than they've seen in a number of years. And when you have those conditions where you have a lot of cloudy days and a lot of rainfall, many times we end up with more disease. So even if you take all the precautions possible, there could still be some pressure from disease out there. It's just nice to have a helpful, useful app like the Ag PhD Corn Disease Guide or Corn Field Guide right at your fingertips to help you when you're out in the field. Well, another thing that's important if you want top yields is controlling our Weed of the Week. 
Can you identify this week's weed? Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. We farm mostly soybeans, uh, probably a third of it is corn. Uh, we switched to the Liberty Link trait about five years ago. We've had real good success with it. Uh, it's helped us control our weeds. Our biggest weed challenge would be the uh, pigweed. And we get our fields clean when we start. And then we usually try to come back 28 to 30 days after planting with our Liberty and a post emerge. And the Liberty is just easier and we don't have to be a chemist to mix our chemical. Very simple and it works. It's all done real well and we're just very happy with the Liberty Link system. The Liberty Link System, a simply better solution. Now backed by the Liberty Weed Control Guarantee, because Liberty is simply better weed control by Bayer. Technology is constantly changing the way we farm. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies are here to keep your farm at the forefront of agricultural innovation. With spray application equipment for any scenario, Hypro is here to put you right on technology, right on target. Each year after the growing season, Darren and I kind of talk about, well, what did we really learn this past year? And we have the good fortune to be able to talk to farmers from all across the United States and many foreign countries as well. In addition to that, we get the chance to talk to corn breeders in terms of what's coming next with both corn genetics and corn traits. So we wanted to get into that and kind of share a little bit what we learned this year from corn breeders. Well, the first thing that I'll say is this, when we have a year. Maybe it's we have great weather, maybe it's we have horrible weather. I get the same story from farmers all over. They say, man, 20 years ago, I couldn't do what I'm doing today. I couldn't reach these yield levels without all the advancements made in breeding. I know I have a lot better corn hybrid today than what I used to plant. And you are absolutely right. The breeders have done a lot of work in a number of different areas, uh, like stress tolerance, for example, to find better hybrids that don't have barren stalks. My dad talks about back in the 70s when they had a big drought, and he said, man, we had a lot of barren stalks out there that didn't even put an ear on. And today, we don't see that anymore. Maybe the ear size is a little bit different in a very stressful situation, but that corn plant's still putting an ear on. We don't see very many barren stalks anymore. Another thing that's been a big development that's improved how we handle these stresses is disease tolerance. Goss's wilt is a great example. It's one problem that we've had on our farm for not that many years. We've had it uh, really over the last five or six years. And what we've seen happen in the corn breeding process is breeders are actually doing specific plots now where they'll inoculate Goss's wilt into all the different hybrids that they're trying out to see what the tolerance is. Now you say, well, that seems like a lot of work to have to inoculate disease into each one of the plants. Why don't they just put it in an area that normally has Goss's wilt and see how it does? 
Well, they've done that in the past, and the problem is some years you have gosses wilt, and some years it's hot and it's dry, and you just don't have any gosses wilt at all. And then they waste a whole year, and here we are another year or two down the road without finding good hybrid solutions. So we're analyzing these hybrids better than we ever have before for certain problems like gosses wilt and other diseases. Everybody wants to talk about biotechnology in terms of traits and oh it's affected all these different things in agriculture you know what it's really affected the most is the overall seed breeding process and here's what i mean by that they used to have to take plants and cross them and then grow them out to see oh okay this plant now looks like it has good roots it looks like it has good yield all these types of things well because they have looked at the entire genome now they've mapped out the genome for corn and soybeans and a few other crops they can actually do DNA testing so right away when a plant produces a seed they can take that individual seed take a little portion of that seed off and run a DNA test on it to find which genes came across in that particular cross does that seed carry good roots does it carry the potential high yield trait or any other trait it's really interesting and because of this what it's done is it's meant that we're coming with the the industry is coming with new things so fast anymore and look at just about any seed company out there i don't care if we're talking soybeans corn anything else how quickly do the new products come how quickly do they dump the old seed it's i mean it's almost every year we get about half new products Okay, so if you liked a number last year of corn, well, there's a 50% probability it's not even going to be available for you this year. It's crazy. That's not the way things used to run even 10 or 15 years ago, but I love it because what this means is we're getting newer, higher yielding products just that much faster. Coming with new genetics every year is great, and coming with these new things faster is fine with me because we keep taking little steps forward. However, there's one problem that really hasn't been solved to this point, and it's anthracnose stock rot. And anthracnose is becoming a growing problem. A lot of the best, highest yielding families of hybrids out there are seeing issues with this one more so than what we saw 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, fortunately, in the breeding process now, as Brian said, with the genome mapped out, we found the source of resistance to anthracnose stock rot. And you're gonna see that coming over the next three, four, five years in quite a few hybrids in the industry, that will be a big step forward for performance. Well, once again, in terms of what we're learning from corn breeders, they're coming with newer, better products all the time, both better genetics and better traits. So hopefully you're going to have higher yield along with better disease tolerance in the very near future. We're really excited about the future of corn genetics. Now, one thing I'm excited about is there will be new options for controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show. Sometimes getting the yield you want means you need a whole new game plan. Think about it. When the older conventional fertilizer you've been using goes head to head with tough soil conditions, they can get all tied up before they ever have a chance to score. That's when it's time to regroup. Time to send in the A-Team. AgroLiquid isn't like other fertilizers. Their nutrient balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations in just the right amounts. And because of AgroLiquid's unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. So you could wind up having one heck of a championship season. Make a smart start with AgroLiquid. To find the closest nutrient coach near you, visit agroliquid.com. Oh, Ed, what are we presenting? That Credenz soybeans are designed using smart genetics. Look, state-of-the-art breeding advances the best germplasm. Plus, tailored varieties for any field conditions with choice in herbicide-tolerant traits. And Credenz soybeans come back by Bayer's ongoing innovation. Want to increase yields and ROI? Plant the smarter soybean. Talk to an authorized Credence retailer or discover the right Credence variety at credence.bear.us. Always read and follow label instructions. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season. Protecting and maximizing your yield potential 
we're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. We had super dry conditions right at the end of the fall, probably some uh, dryest corn we've harvested. Head shell was almost nil, very minimal. We were down to a kernel or less per square foot with this head. And normally we, we thought we were doing good keeping down to that three kernels per square feet with our previous head, whether the corn's worth three bucks, six bucks, or eight bucks a bushel. Definitely, definitely puts more money in our pocket at the end of the day. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about micronutrients, and I, I just can't stress this enough. You've got to look at everything on your farm in terms of, hey, could anything that I've got be a yield limiting factor? And what we find from time to time is that copper absolutely is that yield limiting factor. And in addition to that, it has many other impacts on your overall seed quality and standability. So we want to talk more about copper today. Let me give you the good news and the bad news about copper. Well, the good news is you don't need many pounds of copper to raise a crop. The bad news is, if you're short, you're going to run into problems. So here's the range that we're shooting for on a soil test. We'll use levels from Midwest Labs since they're the largest lab in the country. We would like to see you hit a target of somewhere between 1.4 and 2.0 parts per million on a 6-inch soil sample using Midwest Labs analysis. So with copper, some of the reasons why it's important in plants, copper is often referred to as the disease nutrient. In other words, if you have adequate levels of copper in your plant, and wheat is probably the one that gets mentioned most, it seems like the plant is just a little more tolerant to disease. And I often relate this to human health. So for example, if you're not taking your vitamins or eating a well-balanced diet, what happens? You're more likely to maybe get a cold or the flu, something like that. So have good levels of copper in your plant for that. In addition, Copper is an issue in terms of standability. So yes, potassium is number one for standability, and manganese uh, is, is there too, but copper is also important. So if you're having lodging issues on your farm, copper is something to look at. And finally, we look at just the overall elasticity of a shell. So what I'm getting at here specifically, or just as a specific example, let's look at soybeans. We were ending up with the problem of our soybeans were getting so large on our farm, the seed was really large, our yields were going up, we were doing a lot of great things, but we'd have seed coats falling off. The seed coat just wasn't able to expand properly. Well, in a lot of cases, that's from a lack of the right amount of copper. So address copper and you can have a plant that's going to be more tolerant to diseases, is going to stand a little better, and the seed will be a little bit more elastic, at least with that seed coat. All right, we get the question a lot, do I need to build my soil levels up or do I just need to feed the plant? And hey, if you've got a crop growing right now and, and you're watching this saying, man, I'm halfway to home, but I'm realizing I am a little bit short on copper. Can I feed my crop in season? You certainly can. There are highly available copper products out there. Agro Liquids got one, for example. You could do that. Or maybe you're like us, hey, it's fall. We, we need to get a soil fertility program going. You could do that as well. You can put copper out in the soil so it's ready to go. Now you don't need very many pounds, so you may be looking at a situation of doing a variable rate application across the farm, putting the copper on where you need it, uh, and, and just targeting the rate to each level uh, throughout the different zones in your field. That would be a good way to go to build things up long term. And copper may be one of those nutrients that you build it up today, you might not have to address it again for 10 years or more. Well, here's part of the reason why, because each crop that you raise, even let's say it's 200 bushel corn, you're only going to pull out a minuscule amount of copper. It's a tiny, tiny amount. But let's say that you're at 0.1 parts per million and you want to get up to two parts per million. Well, there's a big gap there. So you're going to have to put on several pounds of copper on a per acre basis in one application if you want to do it this way and get your soil level up to that point. Well, how long is it going to take to go from two parts per million of copper down to uh, even a critical level of 1.4 parts per million? It might be many years. So we're just trying to say here, you get copper fixed and all of a sudden, you aren't even going to have to think about this other than maybe having a little bit in some micronutrient blend, just a little pinch of copper every year. That should be enough once you get those levels up in your soil. 
the big thing with copper is just to measure what's out in your field. So take good soil samples that represent each area of your farm, and then you can monitor your copper levels in the plant throughout the season with plant tissue analysis as well. Yep, and this is an incredibly important nutrient, so I know your focus is probably on N, P, and K, but really take a look at copper levels. It absolutely can make a difference on your farm. Well, the healthier the crop you have, the better it can fight off weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Weed of the Week is Wild Mustard. Now, Wild Mustard, when I was a kid, used to be one of those weeds in small grain fields and in alfalfa fields. The dad would say, boys, just get out there and pull that mustard. But guess what? We don't have to do that anymore, Dad. We got some great herbicide I options will, to kill. I will say this, though. Of all the weeds that we had to pull, I kind of like pulling wild mustard because it didn't seem like it had much of a root to it. And that's one important thing for you to keep in mind. This is not that difficult a plant to kill. It's an annual. It reproduces only by seed. It's got a little root. So it's not that big a deal if you're using the right herbicide. If you choose the right ones. Right. And, and here's, here's a great example. Stinger doesn't kill mustard. So if you're out there and say, oh, I've got a product that has stinger in it, maybe it's wide match in wheat, maybe it's sure starch or triple flex in corn, you're not going to take out mustard very well because one of the main ingredients in those products is stinger. Okay, so what should you use? Well, in corn, how I would probably start would be with Verdict, but certainly there are other products out there. Balance Flex has decent activity. Many of the HPPDs have decent activity. So you've got a lot of options pre-emerged, but I wouldn't go with just the standard like Harness or Pass Outlook Dual. That's definitely not going to do it. Post-emerge, I like Status. The HPPDs work as well. In Throw soy... a little Atrazine in there too. That'll definitely kick it up. You sure can. In soybeans, I like our three pre-emerge program. Uh, especially I like the Metribuzin in there for controlling mustard. Yep, absolutely. Post-emerge, products like Pursuit are pretty decent. And you know what? Roundup is still okay. Liberty definitely works. So you have plenty of options in soybeans. So in wheat, we said, well, don't use wide match. Here's <laughs> the spot where Husky would be a better choice for yep. you. And you can always start off pre-emerge with Sharpen. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week Wild Mustard. But stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Looking for a solution that will grow your returns on every acre? Farmer's Edge offers the most complete package, including hardware, software, variable rate technology services, soil sampling, and unbeatable support, all for only $3.95 an acre. Grow more precisely with Farmer's Edge. To get a special offer from Farmer's Edge, visit GrowYourReturns.com. That's GrowYourReturns.com. Grow your returns for only $3.95 an acre with Farmer's Edge. Can you afford not to? This is the first year we planted stein corn. Uh, we've got about 120 acres of it, about half of its high population. The yields are definitely there, you know. And it's not just the yield, it's a weed control, you know, that and the, it covers that covers the ground so quickly, so there's just the erosion isn't there. I choose stein HP corn because stein has yield. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run. 
and uh, it worked out really well for us. Martin has built me one heck of a nice building and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship. Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Ever wonder if you are over drying or spoiling your grain when you turn on the fans? Do you worry about the condition of your grain all winter long? Are you able to see what is happening in your bins? AgriDry will give you peace of mind with our 24-hour monitoring system. View real-time grain bin data online from a web-enabled device. AD Link will send you alerts when sensors are triggered by potential grain problems. Stop worrying and start storing quality grain with AgriDry. Visit agridryllc.com today. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect only from Case IH. Vertical storage bins, the right choice for fertilizer, seed, or both for your farm? It's the topic of today's Iron Talk. Cone bottom bins are sure nice for handling product quickly without all the cleanup. However, they aren't cheap, so you want to get as much use out of them as you can. Here are a few considerations and a few ways you may make or save some money during the season to pay for them. You need to get a heavy-duty bin so you have more flexibility on which products you can take. If you're going to be handling corrosive fertilizers, obviously a lighter steel tank is just not going to work. Also, with fertilizer especially, clumping in the bin is a possibility. The solution is to avoid blended fertilizer products as straight goods have much less likelihood of problems. Finally, if you take wet seed and especially if you fill the bin right up to the peak, you'll need to watch for spoilage or only keep the seed for a very short time to avoid problems. We've had seed and fertilizer bins for years and have had very few problems over that time period. In fact, we look at the bins as money makers for our farm. We get bulk seed discounts often up to a dollar per unit. Also, we get quantity discounts often up to another dollar per unit. There are early order and early take discounts that with some companies may be up to 10%. We use the bins for seed storage over the winter, and we also use those bins for fertilizer storage over the summer so we can buy fertilizer at the lowest price of the year. Now, one of the big things my dad has always promoted was for us to use our time wisely. Now, by having on-farm storage, we could save time not having to go pick up seed or fertilizer at a dealership and waiting in line while they're busy. Instead, we could get the product delivered to us when we weren't busy. Good heavy-duty cone-bottom bins are not cheap, but the investment can certainly pay you a nice return on investment for many years. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. It's on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.